Under the Speaker's Announcements Policy of January 6, 2015, the Chair recognizes the gentleman from California, Mr. Sherman, for 30 minutes. Thank the Speaker. I rise today to address the Armenian Genocide, the first genocide of the 20th century. Now, I know a number of other members were planning to join me. There has been some confusion as to the schedule, but I hope that uh, members interested in this issue would come to the floor and join me during the next 30 minutes. And I would like to thank the gentleman from Long Beach, California, Mr. Alan Lowenthal, uh, for um, uh, doing, uh, for uh, being at the uh, Subcommittee on Asia, of which I'm the ranking member, uh, so that I can be here on the floor at this important uh, time. Mr. Speaker, today it is the afternoon of April 23rd, here in our nation's capital. But in Istanbul, it is night. It is about to be midnight, bringing in the 24th of April. So as we are here at this very hour, 100 years ago, agents of the Ottoman government, the government ruling the Ottoman Empire, went out into the night to arrest the leadership of the Armenian community there in Istanbul, then the capital of the Ottoman Empire. Soon the rest of the plan went into effect. Having arrested and killed the leadership of the Armenian community, agents of the Ottoman Empire felt free to go into the ancient Armenian lands of eastern Anatolia and begin a process of ethnic cleansing, to begin a process of mass murder, to begin a process of sending people into the desert to die or simply annihilating them on the spot, to begin a well-thought-out plan of genocide, the first genocide of the 20th century. Now I'm asked, why is it so important that we remember this genocide? Well, first, genocide denial is the last step of the genocide itself. And when I say genocide denial, you might think that in recounting history of 100 years ago, that I was simply here to commemorate and to mourn. But unfortunately, the government of modern Turkey has begun and continued a multi-million dollar plan of threats, of lobbying, of secret money, all designed to deny the Armenian Genocide. And that genocide denial is the last stage of the genocide that began a hundred years ago this hour. First in a genocide, a people is destroyed, and then we see the destruction of the memory of their annihilation. But worse than genocide denial being the last step of a genocide, it is the first step of the next genocide. When Adolf Hitler was talking to his henchmen, and they wondered whether they could get away with the total destruction of the Jewish people, he was able to turn to them as he did and said, who remembers the annihilation of the Armenians? So the a genocide denial creates the expectation among other evil men that they can get away with genocide. Why do we here in the United States kowtow to Turkey's demand that we fail to recognize the Armenian Genocide? Last week, the European Union overwhelmingly passed a recognition recognizing 
not only the murders and atrocities that took place in eastern Anatolia, but also using, as was appropriate, the word genocide. And a few days before, Pope Francis used the word genocide for the first time in, Vati in the history of the Vatican to commemorate this 100th anniversary of massacres. Over 40 state legislatures in our own country, 20 foreign governments have recognized that the acts of the Ottoman Empire against the Armenians in the early 20th century constituted a genocide. It is time for this Congress to do what then Senator Barack Obama did and acknowledge that what happened a hundred years ago today, what began a hundred years ago today, was indeed a genocide. I see that we're joined by the uh, chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee, and I will yield to him at such time as he uh, requests. I thank my colleague from California for yielding to me, and I also rise today on the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. And Mr. Speaker, that period of time represented a generation of Armenians, a generation lost to assassination, to deprivation, to assault, to starvation, 1.5 million souls, a half a million others left homeless. Decades of Armenian culture and history and religion erased from the landscape of Anatolia. And on this significant anniversary, a hundred years, we cannot remain silent. Pope Francis said it clearly when he called on the world leaders to oppose such crimes with a firm sense of duty without ceding to ambiguity or compromise. Our National Archives is filled with thousands of pages documenting the premeditated extermination of the Armenian people. Our own ambassador to the Ottoman Empire, Henry Morgenthau, recalled in his memoirs that that Ottoman Empire never had the slightest idea of reestablishing the Armenians in a new country. Those were his words, knowing that, quote, the great majority of those would either die of thirst and starvation or be murdered by the wild desert tribes." Unquote. Growing up in Anaheim, I knew an elderly Armenian who had survived the genocide only because of a compassionate Turkish family that hid him from sight. And he was the only one in his village, the only Armenian in his village that survived. The U.S. has long been a global leader in promoting human rights around the world. The issue of the Armenian Genocide is taught in our textbooks. The French, Swiss, Swedish, German governments, the Russian government, they recognize the Armenian Genocide, as does the EU. As a global leader in human rights, it is important for the U.S. to stand on principle and recognize the annihilation of the Armenians as genocide and while the Armenian Genocide was the first of the 20th century, the blind eye cast to the slaughter of Armenians at the time was a point used by Hitler when he said to his officer corps, who speaks today of the annihilation of the Armenians? You know, my friends, history is a continuum. Yesterday impacts today, which impacts tomorrow. It's much harder to get tomorrow right if we get yesterday wrong. The world's strength to oppose killing today is made greater by accountability for actions present but also past. It's weakened by denial of accountability of past acts. Not recognizing the Armenian Genocide as such weakens us. I wanted to say a bit about the Near East Relief which was the name of the American charity specifically organized in response to the Armenian Genocide. I quoted our ambassador at the time, Henry Morgenthau, and he very much urged support for this effort. And through public rallies and church collections 
and with the assistance of charitable organizations and foundations. That committee raised millions in its campaign to save the starving Armenians as the campaign went across the country with that theme. And between 1915 and 1930, when it ended operations, Near East Relief administered an amazing 117 million in assistance. It delivered food and clothing, materials for shelter by the shipload from America. It set up refugee camps and clinics and hospitals, orphanages and centers for vocational training. Near East Relief is credited with having cared for 130,000 Armenian orphans scattered across a region that stretched from Tbilisi to Yerevan to Istanbul, Beirut, Damascus, and Jerusalem, where they could find those orphans, they cared for those orphans. Near East Relief was an act which, quite literally, kept a people, a nation, alive. And unfortunately, since 1915, hundreds of Armenian religious, historic, and cultural sites have been, have been uh, confiscated, they've been destroyed, they've been vandalized. Turkish leaders must act now to prevent losing any more. The United States must keep pressing Turkish leaders until they commit to protecting these sites and to return all confiscated church properties to their rightful owners. And in addition, we must work to protect those Armenians who are living under the threat of violence today. Armenians in Syria are increasingly targeted for violence by Islamist terrorists due to their religious beliefs. And in Nagorno-Karabakh, um, Armenians suffer under the greatest escalation of violence along the line of conflict in 20 years. As we remember the victims of the first genocide of the 20th century, let us also commit to working for the safety and freedom of their descendants. Such efforts would be a fitting and needing tri needed tribute to the innocent victims of the Armenian Genocide. And I thank, again, uh, the gentleman from California uh, for yielding. I thank the distinguished chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee. I want to associate myself with his comments and particularly thank him for focusing our attention on the struggles of the people of Artsakh. Uh, one should remember that with the support of the government of Turkey, the government of uh, Azerbaijan has threatened to shoot down civilian airplanes headed to the Stepanagart airport. That is the kind of threats and intimidation that the people of uh, Armenia and of Nagorno-Karabakh face today. I see the uh, gentleman also from California, Mr. Rohrbacher, and uh, we'll yield to him uh, uh, at this time if he requests. Let me thank uh, my colleagues from California for taking the time and effort to come here and to uh, put these uh, very important expressions of outrage uh, onto the congressional record. Yes, we are outraged that uh, people today would even uh, consider not acknowledging the fact that there was a genocide that took place uh, 100 years ago. I am a friend of Turkey. I believe that the Turkish people and the people of the United States need to be close, and we were in the Cold War, and I am grateful to their contributions to our security over the years. But this doesn't mean that we should uh, not be totally honest with each other and with them as friends, that, that all of us have made mistakes. Certainly the United States uh, committed errors in its past that we should uh, uh, agree to, to acknowledge. And in this uh, demonstration today, we are putting ourselves in solidarity with the families of those who were victimized a hundred years ago by this, uh, uh, the Armenian genocide. And we also express ourselves to our friends in Turkey. This is time to just acknowledge that in the past mistakes were made and that indeed it's time to move on and to make sure that people today in Turkey are treated with greater respect for their rights and, uh, and in cooperation
continued cooperation with the United States and other free people in the world. So I thank my friend, Mr. Brad Sherman, who has been a leader on this issue uh, for acknowledging the uh, and being here today to make sure that this got into the congressional record on this very important day. I thank the gentleman for his comments. I'm here on the House floor where we today should be voting on a resolution to recognize the Armenian Genocide. Several of us, I believe including the gentleman from California, introduced the Armenian Genocide Truth and Justice Resolution. But that resolution is not on the floor today because of the pressures, arguments, and an incredibly expensive lobbying campaign of the Turkish government. Now, it was a hundred years ago today, as I pointed out in the beginning, that 650 writers, lawyers, poets, doctors, priests, and politicians were rounded up, deported, and, and murdered by the Ottoman government. No one should assume that, or no, that no one should give any credence to the argument that somehow this was a few individuals acting alone, that this was not a coordinated governmental campaign. One million to one and a half million people died, and it was because of a premeditated and carefully planned effort of the Ottoman government. Now, we are told that Turkey is an ally of the United States, and therefore we dare not recognize the genocide here on the House floor. First, I believe that there is nothing that we could do that is more important for the people of Turkey than to recognize the genocide and to urge them to do so as well. How will Turkey be a great country in the future if it's so focused on lying about its past? What relationship would we have with a government in Berlin that was engaged in Holocaust denial? And where in the, who in the world would trust American leadership if the government here in Washington was lying or denying slavery. Every nation has a past. Every nation ought to honestly come to grips with that past. Then we are told that we cannot recognize the genocide because of threats from the Turkish government. Never have I been more ashamed of this Congress that in kowtowing to threats that turn out to be not only outrageous but illusory. Turkey threatened harsh retribution for those countries that recognized the genocide and then took e only token steps against Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Belgium, Argentina, and ten other countries. Some 40 American state legislatures have recognized the Armenian genocide and have not lost a single dollar of exports to Turkey. The greatest attempt by the Turkish government to muzzle a national legislature was their effort uh, roughly a decade ago to prevent France from recognizing the genocide. They threatened an economic boycott. And in the six years that followed France's courageous recognition of the genocide, Exports from France to Turkey increased fourfold. The only thing worse than kowtowing to ridiculous and outrageous threats is to kowtow to a ridiculous and outrageous threats that turn out to be illusory paper tigers. Finally, I have to comment on just how outrageous it is for Turkey to be uh, threatening the United States. Because look at what we've done for Turkey. 
In the years since World War II, we saved them from communism and the Soviet Union. We dispersed over $23 billion in aid. We prevented the creation of a fully sovereign and independent Kurdish state. We helped build the pipeline that brings them oil today. And we have been the loudest voice urging, uh, urging that Turkey be admitted to the European Union. And after we have done all that, they say it's not enough that we have to be accomplices with them in denying and hiding the first genocide of the 20th, for, of the 20th century. This is outrageous. It is time for this Congress to show that America is worthy of world leadership, not only because of our values of freedom and democracy, but because we have the courage to acknowledge the facts that actually occurred, and we are not tempted to gain some sort of illusory alliance advantage by denying the greatest crime that a nation can commit. So I uh, think that as we see the last persons who had it survived the genocide or the nieces and nephews of those who died come to the end of their days that America should recognize this great genocide. At this point, I uh, I'm looking to see if there are others who would want me to yield. And uh, I would ask, I, I, I would yield to the gentleman from California if he had further remarks, but he does not. I want to thank the chair and uh, yield back the remainder of my time. The gentleman yields back.